Howdy, and so what have we learned? We've learned that valence electrons are the outer shell electrons that dominate chemical behavior. We've learned that elements down a column have the same valence electron configuration and hence have the same number of valence electrons. So for instance, alkaline metals have one valence electron, alkaline earth two, noble gases have eight except for helium with two, halogens have seven, and calcogens have six. We've learned that noble gases have a very stable electron configuration because it has full subshells and elements tend to react to get noble gas configuration by either losing, gaining, or sharing electrons. We've learned that Lewis electron dot diagrams represent the valence electrons. Lewis electron dot diagrams are just about the valence electrons. And so we saw previously that the electron configuration for oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now the valence electrons are the outer shell electrons, so the one with the bigger N. And so for oxygen, that would be the second shell. And so oxygen has six valence electrons. Now if we're gonna draw the Lewis electron dot diagram for the oxygen atom, this is how we do it. And you can imagine that each side represents an orbital. And so we have two orbitals that have two electrons, and then two orbitals that have a single electron. But Lewis diagrams are just about the valence electrons. Now Lewis diagrams help us keep track of electrons, which ones are bonding, which ones are lone pair. You have to make sure you count the number of valence electrons before you do a Lewis diagram. Lewis diagrams are typically used for S and P blocks, um, but it's essential that you learn how to draw Lewis electron dot diagrams. As long as you're doing chemistry, you will be using Lewis electron dot diagrams. And so this video is on building Lewis electron dot diagrams. We'll go through a four step procedure on how to build simple Lewis electron dot diagrams. Again, Lewis diagrams are simple yet powerful, help us understand where the electrons are. You know, questions like what is the bond angle, bond length, bond strength, relative bond strength, you have to start by drawing the Lewis diagrams. So it's very important you get very good at drawing Lewis diagrams. And so after watching this video, you should be able to draw the Lewis diagram given a chemical formula. You should be able to determine bond orders of all the bonds given a chemical formula and then by drawing the Lewis electron dot diagram. You should put a series of bonds on nerve increasing bond strength or length using Lewis electron dot diagrams. And you should just be able to describe how when there are resonant structures, the actual structure molecule is a weighted average of all the resonant structures. And so the four steps, the first step is counting the number of events electrons. And so again, Hydrogen, we're looking at ammonia here, and so we have three hydrogens. Hydrogen's in the first column, so it has one valence electron, so three times one gives us three. Nitrogen's in the fifth column, and so three plus five gives us eight valence electrons. Now we have to make sure we use the right number of valence electrons, and so counting the valence electrons at the first step is important. Also, please remember that it doesn't matter where the valence electron started. And so I count them, I basically remove them from the atoms, and then when I draw my Lewis diagram, I'll redistribute them, trying to make the most stable structure. But again, it doesn't matter where the valence electron started from. And so the second step is to predict um, the most likely arrangement of atoms, and sometimes you have to use a little bit of chemical intuition. For ammonia, you know, hydrogen can only have a single bond, and so nitrogen is probably going to be in the center. And so if we assume nitrogen in the center surrounded by three hydrogens, and then the third step is we um, assume single bonds. And then what we see, we see what happens after that. And so by assuming single bonds, we've used six valence electrons. We still have two left. And then the fourth step is we try to add those lone pairs to where we think we need it to get noble gas configuration. And so this is our final Lewis electron dot diagram for ammonia. We've used two, four, six, eight. We use the same number of valence electrons that we started with, eight. The hydrogen, each hydrogen sees two. Remember this line represents two valence electrons. Hydrogen sees two. That's noble gas configuration for the hydrogen. The nitrogen sees two, four, six, eight. And so it also sees a noble gas configuration. And so everything has noble gas configuration. This should be a fairly stable structure. But also please remember, often trial and error is needed. And so if you're not sure, just try something and then evaluate it. And usually by trying something, you learn you know, a little bit and so you can actually try something else. But please don't worry about, do trial and error, that's fine. And so I mentioned that Lewis electron dot diagrams do not accurately represent the three-dimensional structure. They just help us understand where the electrons are. Are they 
bonding or non-bonding. You know, from the Lewis diagram, it looks like this bond angle should be 90 degrees. From the movie, we see that the bond angle is like more, more like 109.5. And so Lewis diagrams are just two-dimensional representations. They do not accurately represent the three-dimensional structure for the molecule. Now we can look at, you know, a question you could be asked is, what is the bond order of the molecules that make up fluorine gas? And so fluorine, it's in the seventh column. You have two of them, so two times seven gives us 14 Venn's electrons. Now we can assume the fluorine is bound to a fluorine, assume single bonds. And so we use two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. We used 14 Venn's electrons. Um, this fluorine sees two, four, six, eight. This fluorine sees two, four, six, eight. So both fluorine sees a noble gas configuration. And so that should be a fairly stable structure by sharing a pair of electrons, each fluorine gets noble gas configuration. Now, single bonds always have a bond order of one, and so this bond order is one. Remember, bond order is the number of pairs of electrons being shared. Another question you can see is, what is the bond order of the molecules that make up oxygen gas? Oxygen is in the sixth column, and so two times six gives us 12, so we have 12 ends electrons. And so oxygen is going to be bound to oxygen. Now we've used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We use 12 electrons. And so after we try a structure, we need to evaluate it. And so this oxygen sees 2, 4, 6, 7. And so that's not noble gas configuration. And so this is not going to be a stable structure. And so we used all our valence electrons, but we didn't get noble gas configuration for everything. And so when that happens, we typically try a double bond or, or a triple bond. So if you don't have enough electrons, try double or triple bonds. And so if we try a double bond here, we still used two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We still used 12 Venn's electrons. That's how many started with. Now, if we look at this oxygen, it sees two, four, six, eight. This oxygen sees two, four, six, eight. So they both see eight. They both have noble gas configuration. And so this gives us a stable Lewis diagram. Again, always count the number of Venn's electrons before and after um, drawing the Lewis diagram. And so the bond order for a double bond is always two. And so the bond order for the oxygen molecule is going to be two. We could try nitrogen. And so N2, nitrogen's in the fifth column. Two times five gives us 10. We can try a single bond. And so we used two, four, six, eight, 10. So we use the right number of Venn's electrons. Again, after you draw a structure, you always evaluate it. And so this nitrogen sees two, four, six. So it only sees six. That's not noble gas configuration. So we didn't have enough Venn's electrons, so we try a double or a triple bond. And so if we try a double bond. We've still used two, four, six, eight, ten. We still use ten Venn's electrons. Now we evaluate, we have two, four, two, four, six, seven Venn's electrons. And so we don't have an octet. And so that's not gonna be stable. And so a double bond at work, let's try a triple bond. And so we used two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. We use 10. Now we evaluate, we have two, four, six, eight. We have eight Venn's electrons here. Two, four, six, eight, eight Venn's electrons there. And so by the nitrogen sharing six electrons, both nitrogen gets noble gas configuration. Another question could be asked is, which of the following has the strongest bond? Well, we've already done the Lewis diagrams. The nitrogen has a triple bond. It's sharing six electrons, three pairs. So that's a bond order three. Now it's kind of interesting. Notice that the bond length is the shortest for the triple bond. And you can imagine that you have more electron density in between the nuclei, so the nuclei can actually get closer. Notice that the bond energy is much higher for the triple bond. It would take a lot more energy to actually break that bond. So the greater the bond order, the more stable and the shorter the bond. You should also remember that single bonds have bond orders of one, double bonds bond orders of two, and triple bonds bond orders of three. We can try something a little bit harder, say CO2. And so carbon is in the fourth column, has four Venn's electrons. Oxygen is in the sixth column, has six. Two times six is 12, plus four gives us 16 Venn's electrons. Now we can assume that carbon's in the center. Now we can try single bonds. And so with those two single bonds, that used four electrons. Now that means we still got 12. 
And so you can distribute the 12. And so we used 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. We used 16 electrons, which is how many we started with, so that's good. And this oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8. This oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8. So both oxygen have double gas, but if you look at the carbon, it's only got four valence electrons. And so we don't have double gas configuration for everything. And so if we go to double bonds, again, if you don't have enough valence electrons to get everything double gas, try double or triple bonds. And so if we try two double bonds, now we used two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So we used the 16 valence electrons, how many we started with. Now this oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So it's happy. Carbon sees two, four, six, eight. It's happy. This oxygen sees two, four, six, eight. It's happy. So everything gets no, has noble gas configuration. And so that should be a fairly stable structure. Now a question you could see is, was the bond or the carbon oxygen bonds? Well, you got two of them. But when you ask about bond or it's going to be about a specific bond or something that's equivalent. Now notice both of these are double bonds and double bonds always have bond orders of two. Now if you remember we talked about bond polarity a, a little bit ago and electronegativity. So what is more electronegative, the carbon or the oxygen? Remember electronegativity increases as you go up and to the right. And so oxygen is more electronegative. And so if we look at the electron density with the electrostatic potential on top, we see that the oxygen has the red hue corresponding to a partial negative charge. The carbon has a blue and that corresponds to a partial positive charge. And so those bonds are going to be polar. Oops. And so for ozone, we have 18 valence electrons. Oxygen again is in the six column, three times six is 18. And let's just, just assume that we have a straight line of oxygen. And so we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Sorry, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So I used 18 valence electrons. I used how many I started with. Now this oxygen has two, four, six, eight. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight. So the outer oxygen are happy. The one in the center, two, four, six, not so happy. And so if we, we could make this a double bond, the one on the left, or we could make the one on the right a double bond. Now it doesn't really matter, they should be equivalent. And so again, putting the double bond on the left or putting the double bond on the right should be equivalent. Each oxygen oxygen bond should be the same. And so these two are called resonance structures. Now again, let's just make sure we use the right number of events. Electrons, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. This oxygen has eight, this oxygen sees eight, this oxygen sees eight. So everything has noble gas configuration. We use the right number of valence electrons, um, but it, these are what we refer to as uh, resonant structures. Now for resonant structures, the actual structure is going to be a weighted average of all the resonant structures. And so you could be asked, what's the bond order of the oxygen oxygen bonds for ozone? And you know we developed this equation um, last time. And so the bond order is one half number of electrons being shared, bonding region. And so we have two, four, six electrons being shared we have one, two bond regions, and so one half of three is 1.5. Another way of doing bond order for resonance structures is by just taking the average. And so you have a bond order of two, bond order of one, one plus two is three, divided by two gives you 1.5. Actually, the math is completely um, consistent. And so for bond orders, you can have integers or non-integer values when you have resonance structures. And so the actual structure for ozone looks something like this. The um, dashed line represents a partial bond. And so the bond order is 1.5 for each of those oxygen-oxygen bonds. And again, those oxygen-oxygen bonds should be absolutely equivalent. Here we have the carbonate ion. And you know again, we have resonant structures. The double bond could be there, there, or there. It's entirely equivalent. Each of those carbon oxygen bonds should be the same. And so what is the bond order for the oxygen carbon bonds and carbon dioxide, sorry, carbonate ion. And so we could use the equation, 
one half number of electrons being shared bond regions. And so we're sharing a total of two, four, six, eight electrons. There's three regions, one half of that, and that gives us 1.33. Another way of doing it, again, is just taking the average. So you have two bond, two single bonds. So one plus one plus two gives us four divided by three, and we get the 1.33. Another example for resonance structure, you know, this carbon oxygen bond has to be the same because we can put the double bond there, we can put the double bond there. And so the bond order, we, again, we could use the equation. So we're sharing six electrons, two, four, six. We got two regions, and that would give us a bond order 1.5. Or again, you can think about in terms of the average, we have one plus two divided by two. And so that also gives you a bond order of 1.5. And so it's a little confusing, you know, you're never going to be asked the bond order for the complete molecule, you know, here, so we just have the carbon and the oxygen. And typically you're asked about bond orders for specific bonds. So like the bond order of the carbon carbon is, is one, but for the carbon oxygen here, because you have two resonant structures and they should be exactly equivalent, they have the same bond order. I hope that was helpful.